Boys and girls, it's 2020, and welcome back to my channel for another Too Fast For You video. Hmm, what is it going to be this time? Hmm, before we get into it, I want to give a big shout out to my boy Eric Henderson over at Adventures of Field. Check him out. I'll put up a link here. I want to say thanks for the shirt. I'm going to give you guys close-up. Really a nice shirt, Eric. I love the way this thing feels. I love the, the knitting. Thanks, Eric. Mason and I appreciate our shirts, man. These are really, really nice. Okay, so moving forward to the video. Um, this doesn't look like an air gun. Um, unfortunately, because of YouTube policies, and from my understanding, I probably cannot show you guys the assembly or tuning uh, because it's probably threatening in uh, some type of way to somebody who can make it into anything they want. So, take a break. We're going to come back. We're going to empty out the parts. And then we're going to show the gun fully assembled to see what it is. Stay tuned. Okay guys, from right to left, we have the power adjuster along with the hammer. Um, this is all from Cothran. So it's the power adjuster, the main spring, and also the hammer. To the left of that, we have the end cap for the uh, tube for the air tube and as you can see it comes with the screw on uh, cover that covers the fill, uh, fill nipple very very nice very nice also made by Cothran next up we have the famous powerhouse valve the disco powerhouse valve um, hopefully this valve as you can see by the holes <laughs> it's gonna make uh, tremendous amounts of power so I can't uh, wait to see how uh, this valve turns out but she is beautiful to the left of that we have replacement o-rings very nice for him to put the replacement parts in there uh, I'm gonna label that bag and put it in the case that the gun's gonna go in Right below to the left of that, we have the bolt probe and we also have the cocking handle. Um, very, very nice pieces. Very nice pieces. So next up, we have the receiver. And as you can see, the receiver is very, very well made. Um, I mean, I can't say enough. It's, it, it's, it's just the finish and everything that he did, the sandblasting is just, it, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> I don't really have words. Uh, very beautiful. Then next up, we have the air tube. This is the disco air tube that he makes out of stainless steel. Now, remember, guys, most of all his parts are stainless steel. Um, a very strong stainless steel. Look at all those holes. Man, he did a really good job. Next up, we have a 14 inch 457 barrel. That's right, guys, 457. 14 inch 457 barrel. Next up, we have two barrel bands. I really like that Don Cothran uses the dual barrel band. You can use two, you can use one. Uh, it's up to you. One at the muzzle and one at the breech or one right in the middle. Uh, it's, it's wherever you want to put them. Very, very nice. All right, next up we have the uh, from Maverick Custom Air Guns. We have the P-Rod two-stage uh, trigger assembly. Very, very nice. Um, I like the package that he puts with it. Um, I'll show you here we have the uh, the walnut grips very beautiful beautiful walnut grips that comes he sells this stuff separate or he sells it in a package I bought the package deal and with that package deal you'll see in a second here comes the hammer assembly and a hammer spring um, they're just more spare parts to have and then 
uh, he also adds the two, I think they're brass screws, brass or black, we'll see in a minute here, that go with the uh, wood grips. What I like about the, the walnut grips is that he puts a brass insert here that pretty much when you tighten the screw down, it's going to tighten against that insert versus tightening against the wood. So it's really, really, really nice. It goes, it, the head recesses inside of that brass insert. Really, really nice feature. Good attention to detail from Maverick uh, Custom Air Guns. All right, guys, let's put this thing together and see what she does. I'm excited. All right, guys, let's go ahead and wrap this portion of the video up. The pistol is fully assembled. Here we go. Everything is locked tight. Every screw has locked tight on it and torqued down. Everything was aligned up before I tightened all the screws. She is good to go. What I did find out, I had to call the uh, maker, Don Cothran, and what this piece was, was a heavier rear cocker. It looks like a cocking handle that goes over here, but it's actually a rear cocker. So you have a light one and a heavy one. So here is the light one. There you go. He just cocked the gun like that. And then here's a heavier one to replace that one. I'll show you a close up. All right, guys, now that we have the gun fully assembled and she's ready to fill um, and test shoot, I am going to scope her with a UTG AccuShot. This is the tube by seven by 32. It has a one inch tube and it also has uh, mill dots. It's the PDC reticle. So it is a pistol scope. It's got a parallax of 35 yards. It has an eye relief of about 25 inches, up to 25 inches. So you can hold it closer for guys to shoot or guys that have long arms like me, you can hold it out up to over two feet and you still can see through the scope. So I can't wait to get this on there. Um, it also has the red and green uh, illumination, which I never use. So let's go ahead and get the scope installed and take a look at what it looks like with the scope on it. Hey guys, what's up? We got the pistol out. This is time for the field test portion. We're gonna try to make this as quick as possible. We got Nielsen Specialty Ammo, NSA. Uh, this is 196 grain flat base hollow point. 254 grain boat tail hollow point. Yes, 254 grains. We have 147 grain spear round balls and we have Hunter Supply 150 grain 457 pellets. So we're gonna take some quick crony numbers off the lab radar. <clears throat> we're going to shoot 35 yard sight in and we're gonna take it out to 50 yards, just have a little bit of fun. And then that's gonna be the it for the field test. And then we'll go back to the uh, overall thoughts and uh, opinions on the pistol. Let's get started guys, enough talking. Okay guys, <clears throat> let's go ahead and do some quick velocity numbers. What I'm going to do first I just want to get a general velocity uh, with each projectile. So I'm not going to do five shots, six shots. All it takes is one shot to know how fast something's going from a full fill. So I filled up to 3200, which is where I think I'm going to keep it. Um, let's take one shot. I'll call out the projectile, the weight, and I'll call out the speed because you're not going to be able to read the lab radar. Let's get to it. So here we go with the first projectile. 196 grain hollow point from NSA ammo. Let's see if we can get this thing to register on the lab radar. Five hundred and ninety-eight feet per second at thirty-two hundred psi with the one ninety-six. Next up, two hundred and fifty-four grain boat tail hollow point NSA. Five 
545 feet per second. <clears throat> Next up, spear round ball, 457. About 145 grains. Not registering. Should be about 680 feet per second um, from all my testing that I've done so far. I've gotten numbers at this field before. So next up, Hunter Supply 150 grain pellet. Six hundred eighty-six feet per second. So the pellet and the round balls actually do about the same speed, about six eighty. So six hundred eighty-six feet per second. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get it sighted in, and uh, let's see what this thing will do. All right, guys, we're going to zoom in on the target here, thirty-five yards going to show you the downrange target so you can hear the gunshot in the distance in the background and then you'll see the pellet hit so zoom in I think first up are going to be pellets and then underneath that are going to be the spear round ball All right, guys, I pulled this shot, the first one, and then I, I made it up by putting three right there. So this is 35 yards. Um, this was round ball, first shot went here, and then I put one, two, and then three right there. So let's move on to the next bit of ammo. All right, guys, on the top is gonna be the 196 NSA, and on the bottom is gonna be the 254. Alright guys, there's a 196, three shots, we have vertical stringing, but then here's the uh, 254 grain hollow points. Yes, I need more practice, but this is the first time out with the gun, and uh, with either the pellets, round ball, or the 256, I mean 35 yards if I were hunting deer or hog, I definitely would have made a kill, that's for sure, so, so far so good, I'm loving it. Alright, let's get to blasting. All right, guys, we got a target set up at uh, 50 yards, two targets. Um, let's go ahead and do some blasting, man. I'll call it out. First time shooting it is 50 yards, so let's see if I can even hit the can. 254 grain Nielsen specialty ammo. <laughs> oh, yeah. dead rabbit all day long okay guys one last test at 50 yards before we move on I have to try round ball now to see how they fly at 50 yards go for a hard shot right in the heart right in the heart Oh man, this round ball ammo. This gun's amazing. This gun is freaking amazing. 
I want to show you guys something here. Here's 50 yards with this pistol. And I'm going to <clears throat> just try to explain. So I haven't shot pistols in a long time. Powder burner or air gun. Especially air gun. Um, this is 50 yards. So as you can see from the 50 yard groups. Look at my grouping at 50 yards. And then look at what I did at 35 yards. As you can see from the 50 yards. There's two or three round ball right there. There's one that skimmed off the top of the head. So I'm shooting right into the eye. And three of them land like right here on video. Three round balls land right there in the heart. First one hits right in the heart. Then you got one just on the top at uh, 1 o'clock. And then I think one at 3 o'clock. So I mean, what, what I'm showing you guys is you start shooting something you're not used to shooting or you had not been shooting for long this is why it's important to practice 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 and get familiar even as I'm shooting as 20 30 minutes are going by I'm getting better and better and better everything's starting to come back to me as far as my grip so look how tight the 50 yard groups are opposed to the 35 yard groups I'm shooting better on steel than I was on paper not because paper is hard it's because I'm getting warmed up now so just want to kind of point that little thing out and as you can see on the bottle look at that two three holes right there on top of each other at 50 yards on a pistol so i'm getting better and better all right let's go ahead and move it out all right guys we moved the rabbit out to 100 yards i'm just shooting at 100 i'm never really going to shoot 100 yards with this pistol i just want to see what this thing can do at 100 yards we're going to take the nielsen specialty ammo we're going to run it out to 100 yards. Three shots, 100 yards. Let's see what it'll do. And you guys will walk with me. You should hear the clanging in the background. Listen, listen for the shot, the hang time, the clang. Never even shot this gun 100 yards, to be honest. But I love doing stuff like this because I know I can figure it out. Here we go. First shot. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, it hit way low, but that's not the point. I know I'm not seeing what I'm seeing. I can't be. I can't be. I can't, that can't be two shots in the same hole at 100 yards. It, it can't. I'm serious, guys. I'm not even making this up. It, it can't be. Now, nah, we got to go see that. I know this thing's a shooter, but come on. It don't shoot that good. Just, I'm going to zoom in while I'm walking. You guys are going to get dizzy, but I'm zooming in just so you can see as I'm walking here. There's my 35. There was a bottle with 100. There's the rabbit. Yeah, I got, last shot was right there on the leg. You can even see the little divot. Two shots side by side, Nielsen Specialty Ammo. 100 yards, guys, with a pistol. No other ch paint chipped off this target. You guys saw it live, you saw it here. All right, guys, I'm gonna try. Hitting the rabbit at a hundred yards offhand. Man, this is gonna be hard.
too. Shooter 1721. You ain't the only one can shoot offhand, baby. <laughs> Yeah, I'll just show you guys. Shooter 1721, you know I'm messing with you. Shooting offhand is something I've been doing for a long time, but I'm definitely rusty with pistols. See the two separate shots? One high by the heart and one down by the, uh, in the stomach area? Yeah, that was just me at 100 yards offhand. Not about groups, just having fun. All right, guys, welcome back to my beautiful lab. <laughs> Here we go with the overall thoughts and uh, opinion on the gun. First and foremost, we know this is a Don Cothran pistol. Um, you can buy this pistol at CothranMachine.com. I'll put up a link here. Also, I want to say this first this is a new gun for me for me but this is not a custom one-off bill this is something that each and every one of you can go to Don's website and buy the barrel the air tube the breech the cocking knob the power adjuster the uh, bolt the hammer the valve the end cap all those pieces are on Don's website as I've stated in the beginning, the trigger assembly came from Maverick Custom Air Gun. So you can also go there to buy the lower. Beautifully made stock, beautiful parts. This is, out of all the Crossman guns except my Marauder, this is on par with my Marauder because I custom tuned my Marauder. This trigger I have done no work to and it has a beautiful two-stage trigger. Overall thoughts and opinions on the gun. I love this gun, can't say enough about it. Probably one of the most accurate pistols I've ever shot. I was actually amazed at how this thing grouped at 50 and even 100 yards offhand. That's right, you guys saw me shoot offhand. This group offhand, this dot and this dot were round ball, spear round ball. 680 feet per second offhand, as you saw in video, it's five and three quarter inches group. That's me being rusty. I don't shoot pistols as often as I used to. And I definitely don't have scopes on my pistols. So using optics was a new thing for me to hold a gun like this. And I could see every breath and the wind blowing. I still managed to keep the crosshairs as consistent as I could and pull off two shots that measure five and three quarter inches center to center. It's only two shots. Also the gun was not tethered. So I know the next thing is a lot of people have questions about tethering. Well it's a hunting pistol and you know blah blah blah. So one of the things about this gun that makes this so beautiful is this gun is fully tunable means it has a power wheel or not a power wheel but it has a power i guess a screw um, it basically is a threaded adapter that turns in on the spring so far i have this about 10 and a half turns in from fully out and it looks like you can probably go 13 or 14 turns i'm sure this gun is probably capable of making 200 foot pounds but i think for what i'm going to do with the gun and for most of what you're going to see on the video i'm going to keep it where it is i got lucky <laughs> shows you how good the gun is i got lucky just to set it for a certain speed a certain foot pounds which is about 175 foot pounds with uh heavy bullets and no it's 193 foot pounds with 320 grains that's right it will push a 320 grain cast bullet at 500 feet per second i'm averaging about 155 foot pounds of energy with round ball and the hunter supply pellets that is good enough for me for you guys that might want a bit more shot count tune the gun yourself 
I don't like getting into tuning because everybody's taste is so varied. You get people that, oh, I don't like power, or you get people that, oh, I don't want 12 foot pounds, I want something. In this gun allows you to fully tune the gun to your liking. Um, you're not gonna see too many untethered shots from me because where I have the gun tethered, it's not gonna make three very consistent shots. If I wanted three consistent shots, I could just detune the gun to get three very consistent shots. Enough about tuning. Overall weight on the gun is 4.32 pounds with the scope. Um, I will put that video up here so you can see me weigh it. Um, the gun is very light. It's like three pounds without the scope, so it's very light. Um, she does have a bit of a kick, which you should expect that out of a pistol making 170 to or 155 to almost 200 foot pounds the overall feel of the pistol with these grips from maverick custom air guns is about as good as you think a grip should feel this grip does have finger grooves on it as well as a thumb rest very comfortable i couldn't have done a better job putting this pistol together um don confident couldn't have done a better job building it um, as far as machine quality, his machining quality is bar none uh, about the best there is. There is absolutely no burrs. There is no rough spots on the gun. There's no twisting parts to get them to fit. Everything just slides in. Perfect example, the barrel, he sandblasted. Then he, he hand polished the rear of the barrel. So when you slide it in the receiver, it slides in like butter. And there are two dimples for set screws on top of the receiver. It helps you line up the transfer port and everything. I mean, it goes together like Legos. One feature that I really like about this pistol, and we'll do this here, is he makes the loading a separate function from cocking the gun. In other words, you can load around, close the bolt, and walk around or around in the chamber. If you see something, you can cock the gun and shoot. I think it's a very simple gun. It's very straightforward. There's not a lot of gadgets on it. Another great feature, he put the set screw right here in the end cap. As this power adjuster threads in, you find out where you like the gun, set the set screw, the power adjuster never changes. All right, guys. Oh, one of the other features that I like about the Maverick Custom, uh, a Maverick Custom Air Gun trigger is that this is a fully adjustable two-stage trigger. There is a first and a second stage. This trigger has to be about a pound light. Maybe not on this video, but maybe my next video, I will put it on my scale and weigh the trigger, but it is by far one of the best triggers on an air gun that I've felt. And for a pistol, it is absolutely phenomenal. So anyway, guys, that concludes this uh, introduction, uh, field test and review of the Cothran 457 pistol. I'd like to thank Mr. Don Cothran himself for making such a quality product. If you guys have any questions, leave questions down in the comments section. I'll again flash links to Don Cothran's website so you guys can go there and take a gander. Um, I'll also list everything that I have on the pistol. And that does it. I appreciate you guys uh, staying tuned to the video. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed and you like what you saw, please click the subscribe button.